All right, so what you see in the vise is a, uh, a little bit easier <clears throat> version of a Charlie Mann smelt pattern. Uh, there's, when I say easier, uh, what we're talking about is not having to have two separate uh, bobbins running at the same time coming off the back and the front. And our crystal flash is going to be tucked inside of our Mylar tubing as opposed to being on the outside. Uh, so that said, this is what it's going to look like when it's done. So there's a few things here that can really help with tying these bigger patterns. One is get your vise, especially if you have a rotary, get it set up so that it's as in line as possible, meaning that the back of your shank is running in line uh, with the top part or at least even with it uh, to start. And then what I'll do, uh, just to help for the head purpose, is uh, I'm gonna tilt it up, at, and, or slope it up, I should, should say. Sorry, <laughs> slip of the tongue. I should slope the hook up at just a slight angle. And when it comes to building the head, this is going to help keep the thread from wanting to slide down onto the eye. Uh, several things that we're going to need real quick and then I'll show you another technique uh, before we get started. That's going to come in handy. It's easier to do on a, a bare hook. Is one, have a couple of pair of scissors handy. Uh, one that I use that's kind of stiff. Uh, this pair is just a uh, Fiskars. I got it at Walmart for, I don't know, $7 or something. It's their small one. Uh, but you can take it and gauge or use it as a caliper the size of your where your head's going to be. Uh, the head needs to be uh, between 1 and 1 1.5 hook eye lengths. So we can just use this as a caliper and you can kind of gauge from there. So a couple pairs of scissors is good. Uh, also, it's it's handy to have two bobbins uh, loaded. One with uh, I'm going to use some uh, 70 UTC or 70 UTC white and some 70 UTC black. Um, not mandatory that you have two, but uh, it makes things a little more expedient, I guess. And I unloaded my black, so let me load it again real quick. Uh, while I do that. Uh, the hook that I have in the vise, I'll hold one up here in a second, is a TMC 300. Let's see if I can get that loaded. Came undone, sorry. There we go. It's a TMC 300 size 4 times 6 long. Um, a lot of these smelt patterns are typically pretty long, uh, so we're going to go with a size 6 long uh, and four size 4 hook gap. So. Uh, first off, what we're going to start with is our white thread, and I'm going to show you a technique because we need to tie a knot in the back, <clears throat> and I'd rather show you this up front in case you need to practice as opposed to, uh, you know, starting to fly, getting all this material on there, and then having to try to figure this out. So we're going to start our thread right here in the back, and we'll just do a quick jam knot. And we can trim that off. I'll put a couple of extra wraps in just to make sure it doesn't come off. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to zoom out my camera so you can see what my hands are doing. Oop. Okay, so I'm going to take my fingers, I'm going to push them away from me into my thread, and I'm going to rotate them up kind of like a whip finish. I'm going to slide that right on top of the hook. Oop. I'm going to pinch and pull. Sorry, it's a little hard to do this with a bunch of stuff in my way. Usually it's pretty simple. Something like that. And we want these to land right on top of one another. So if you need to practice doing that, uh, using a regular whip finish is not going to really get you to the back. Uh, not very well. Sorry, now I gotta adjust everything again a little bit. 
So, uh, and I'm going to take a quick blade to the hook, get that off there, and we'll start tying the fly. So, there you go. A little bit of an intro, but uh, now we're now we're kind of ready. This is a uh, really not that hard of a pattern to tie. Th this one's going to imitate a, a rainbow trout smelt. And a smelt is basically something like a fingerling you can think of <clears throat> if you wanted to. So when they say fingerling, it's, you know, about something like that. So maybe it's a little bit smaller than a fingerling. Uh, and you can tie these in a wide range of colors, too. Um, you can get creative here. So what we're going to do is we want to create a thread base along the uh, shank. And I'm going to start my thread about one eye length behind the hook. So... I'm going to gauge that up and see if everything lines up to about that because that's where my head's going to go. And I'm just going to start wrapping back. Uh, big open turns is fine. Uh, if you're comfortable with not needing to gauge your head, then you can actually just start from the back here. But we're going to end our thread right about the hook point there. Yeah, so if you don't need to wrap all the way back, you can start oh, right in this area right in here, and that'll be cool. Uh, next, what we're going to do is get some marabou. We're going to get some white marabou, just like this. Uh, what I try to look for if it's coming off uh, of a string is I try to find one that has a little bit of a concaved belly. And I'll take that one. Uh, next, what we want to do is everything here at the stem, or at the very tip of the stem, we want to kind of get rid of, so that you can kind of see that it's exposed like that. And all this is going to do is when we wrap this forward, it's going to help this lay down and come around the hook shank. Um, and I also like to try to find uh, a couple of qualities, if possible. One, it's got the little concaved belly and two uh, the plumes flare up and uh, you know any of this other extra stuff that can potentially just get in your way I try to get rid of so first what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it to the side I want to draw everything back like so and I'm going to try to gauge at this point where about half is and then I can pinch engage. We want this to kind of lay flat because it's going to help hold our crystal flash tail up. Now I'm going to pinch it just like so. I'm going to take it and place it right on top of my thread that's right there at the hook point. And I'm just going to put oh, two or three uh, loose wraps over and kind of position it. I want to get that tail up a little bit and I'll start, as I start to put more in, I'll tighten it a little bit. And it's going to really help that tail get out and around. Now I can kind of tighten it. And I'm just going over the same spot here. I'm not uh, doing like a three, uh, three maneuver tie-in because that's going to lock it down. And I don't want it locked down just yet. Because I want to be able to play with it. If you, if, if you do that three wrap maneuver uh, it doesn't allow you to play with it so I want to get it lined up so it's sitting about like that where I've got a nice fluffy tail and this is running right on top of the hook shank like so next what we're going to do is we're going to open spiral wrap up just like we did the base here and the best way to do that that I found is I'm just going to pinch at the back and I'm going to do a loose turnover Pinch again where my thread is, loose turn over. Pinch again where my thread is, loose turn over. As you get better at this, you can probably just turn, pinch, turn, pinch, turn, pinch, turn, pinch. Uh, or, you know, maybe get to the point where you're not worried about it. But we're going to do some open spiral wraps. So by the time you get up front, it looks about like that before you get to where you started your thread. Because that's where we want to get to. You want to come in and sort of trim this out at that spot and now we're going to start to kind of tighten everything down like so all right next we're just going to start 
wrapping back in smaller turns and just kind of closing everything up, locking in. You can see how everything in the body is starting to shrink together and become a little more formed. And if you got a bunch of this fuzz that sticks out, don't worry about it too much. So by the time you get back to your starting point, or your, where your tail is, I should say, you should have something that looks about like that. Cool. Next, we need some green crystal flash. <clears throat> Again, you can use, uh, it, depending on what you're wanting to do, you can use a ton of colors, um, play around with it. You can actually use more than one. Uh, color of crystal flash. For, for this we're just going to stick with one color as we're going for kind of like a rainbow trout so we want a greenish darkish color. Uh, and I want to get about six. Now normally it comes on a little stick like this. Um, sometimes you buy material kits or something and it doesn't come on this. You get half of this like you'll, this will be quartered like this or something like that. What you're looking to do is just get six strands, uh, maybe eight you know, six to eight. And we're gonna kind of take them down to the tip, see if they're all about the same length. And I get one, two, three, four, five, six. Oop. Except I couldn't grab that one. So I got four. Okay, I got seven. I'll just take seven. Good enough. And I wanna come back to the base if it's on the stick or on the zip tie. And I'm just going to trim that out. And what we're going to do here is we want the ends kind of tapered uh, just a little bit, like not much, just a fuzz. So this is the end that came from the end. And you kind of see they're all just a little bit different length. And this end here is just a little bit different ink length. So you can kind of just take your thumb and index and just kind of pick and pull just to loosen them up a little bit and get them to a different length. And if one, if your left or right side uh, is a little longer than the other, don't, don't worry about any of that too much to start with. So what we're going to do, uh, the easy way to do this is I'm just going to grab the whole bunch. I'm going to lift it up on my thread, set it down. I'm going to keep all this gathered and with my left thumb left index holding the rear and my right thumb right index holding the front, I'm going to pull until this crystal flash is just a little bit longer than that marabou at the tail. And I'm going to put about three or four wraps in here. Start with three. Now I can turn it to the side. Again, I want these kind of loose so that I can play with them, position them where I want them. Because uh, once we once we get them in, uh, they're going to be locked down, um, and we just kind of want them splayed open like so, kind of floating around. And once you have what you want, I'll put in two or three more, kind of like that. Next, I'm going to grab all this crystal flash and start drawing it forward. And I want to kind of keep it as flat as possible, if you can see that. When I turn it to the side, it's almost like one and my hands aren't working quite right with the angle that I need but it, it, it's very flat and then if you or if I turn it up to the side or to the top of the fly it starts to widen and that's what we want and so you don't want to pull tight on this you want to be somewhat loose and what we're going to do is we're going to take I'm going to leave my thumb in place there everything on everything on the top turn it back around so you can see everything on top of the fly and I'm going to kind of gather the other ends with everything still kind of being loose. And I'm gonna place the front ends right on top as well at about the same distance. Again, a few loose wraps to see if everything's kind of splayed open where I want it. This is your chance to kind of move it around again. Take your thumb, drive it around very gently. And now I'm gonna put in three or four good wraps, nice and tight. Next, what we want to do is make sure that all of this crystal flash is on top. We don't want anything on the bottom side that gets stuck. And you can take your, your index and your thumb and start to move the front side around. Sometimes you can just grab, sometimes you get real lucky and get everything to lay super flat and you just grab 
grab the loop up front and just pull so that it's laying flat like this. Uh, you, we want most of the color on the top of the back, but we want some display around the sides as well. Once you have your crystal flash uh, in a decent position, just pinch it with your left thumb, left index, or vice versa if you're right, uh, left-handed. And now we're just gonna open spiral wrap back up to where our thread started. Just kind of reposition that down. I'm gonna turn this to the side so that you can see this. Okay, I'm not pulling super tight, but I've got a green back. Now I'm just gonna place a couple loose wraps there. And now I've got it something like that. I'm just gonna pull tight and put in half dozen nice tight turns so that it's on the back side. Uh, the crystal flash we want to come down about halfway on either side on the front or on the left and right side and so you can play around with that a little bit if you need to and then once you have that and you have it wrapped down wrap down towards the eye not all the way to the eye I've still about I've still got about a bodkin width right there we're gonna come in with some scissors uh, and clip this out if you've got nice scissors don't use the tips if you got rough scissors that are like rough cutting scissors like these, go ahead and use them. Uh, if you got some nicer scissors like this, make sure you're cutting that material down here, not up here. And uh, yeah, so we're just going to kind of wrap all that in. Bugs flying on me and landing on me. Is that these little moths. And we'll just go back and forth a few times. And now we can get our whip finisher, if I can find it. It was just here. I'm not sure what I would have done with it, but okay. Apparently my whip finisher moved. That's all right, we'll just put a couple half hitches in. See, I thought I was like totally prepared. Like I got everything I need, all my tools and everything. Oh. And of course I don't. All right. Okay. Now, what I like to do at this point is take some head cement <clears throat> or super glue. I guess you could use UV resin. I don't like using UV resin for this part. Um, and I'll just put a drop on each side there. Lock all that glue in, or uh, lock all that thread into place with the glue. What on earth did I do with my whip finisher? Well, anyway, all right. So what we're going to do next? We're going to move on. I don't need it. Uh, is gonna, we're going to get some mylar tubing. Uh, this is considered small mylar tubing. Um, some companies we'll call this medium uh, and so I'm going to show you with my ruler what we're talking about uh, so we have about an eighth of an inch mylar tubing here uh, like I said some companies call this uh, large or I'm sorry uh, medium some call it small uh, some call three sixteenths medium so I guess it depends on who you're getting it from but uh, but about an eighth of an inch or three sixteenths of an inch will work. What we need here is a distance of how much mylar we need. And I just kind of collect everything and pull it to the back and I want to take my mylar tubing and put it just past the bend of the hook or maybe flush with the bend of the hook. Now on the front side I want to have my mylar just past the eye as well. So you may have to kind of play with your fingers a little bit to get in position. Uh, but I keep it tight to the hook shank so that my dimensions don't move. So something about like that. And I'll double check it to make sure I don't need to trim it. It's always easier to take away because you can't add. So. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my finger and start to kind of rough 
the one end up like this. And as I do that, what's going to happen is the mylar cord uh, is going to start to open up, which is what we want. And I can easily get to the, uh, the, the braided core inside and just grab it. We're going to pull that out. You can pretty much discard that. So I'm going to take this roughed up side. I'm going to flip it around so that it's running towards the rear of the fly. And I'm just going to push it right over the top. I'll set it right there. Uh, if you, you know, if, you know, if you wear glasses or you have a hard time seeing or something like that, you may want to take a black marker right here and where your thread is, where, where you've tied everything down in the back, just take a black marker and make a black dot. Now you can actually go all the way around if you want, if that makes you feel better. Uh, it doesn't really affect the fly one way or the other. All this is here to do is help you see where you need to attach your thread after the tubing is on. Uh, most of this is going to get covered up with thread anyway. So I don't know if you can see that, but you can kind of see that little black dot right there. Uh, so this kind of helps with that. And we're going to kind of just push this back. You may have to come back and forth a few times. When I grab everything, I want the tubing the frayed part of the tubing or the tips of the frayed tubing to extend just past the bend something like so. Next I'm going to get my white thread and this part can be a little tricky. I'm just going to hold it just like I'd be tying onto the shank. I'm going to gently wrap around Where my black part go? There it is. I'm just going to gently wrap around my marker with one, two turns. Now I'm holding this, uh, I'm holding tension on on both, I'm going to hold tension on both ends of the thread. So on uh, my tag I'm holding up, my bobbin I'm holding down, and at the same time I just want to pull. And it will stop your mylar from spinning around the shank of the hook. Now each time you go around, you want to have a tight turn. What I do to keep this on so it doesn't fall off is I'll take it, I'll move it forward, put two or three wraps directly over that, I'll take it, I'll flip it to the back, put two or three wraps directly on top of that, and now I can trim out my tag. Now that little maneuver that we started with at the beginning where we need to put a knot back here, that's where this comes into play. So see if I can do everything on camera. So I'm going to push away my thread. I can do mount actually. I'm going to push away with my thread. I'm just going to twist and that was not the prettiest I've ever done, but I'm going to slide it up on there and pull. Twist. Oop, pull. Sorry about all this extra stuff in the way. I don't usually zoom out when I do these. And you want to do three or four. If you can get your index finger on the back side, you can loop it on top. Use your index finger to hold it and pull it tight like that. There's lots of different ways to do it, but all we want to do is create a knotted thread base right there. And apparently I did that because I got this, which needs to be trimmed out. Cool. All right, let me zoom back in. So what we're going to do here is we're going to switch over to our black ultra thread. And I'm just going to run my fingers along the body of the fly, and I'm going to—you'll be able to feel where your thread base dropped off, and that's where I'm going to attach my thread. I'm going to do the same thing: two loose wraps, pull up and down at the same time. It all cinches tight. I'm going to do the same thing 
forward, flip it over, go to the back, trim it out. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my crazy glue and I'm just gonna put a drop in on top, a drop in on top. If your thread frays on you a little bit, when you take it off, just move it around with your fingers, move the glue around with your fingers. And so at this point, your fly should be about like this, and you can kind of maneuver it around a little bit. Like so. Cool. Almost to the home stage here. For the little gills, we're actually going to add uh, a hot spot. A hot spot. Since this is a uh, rainbow trout, we're going to add some pink gills instead of red. And again, I'm just using some marabou. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in, and I don't need much. I really don't need much. I'm just going to pull it off the side of the stem. And so I've got this little strip of marabou. I'm going to kind of work my fingers. Oh, sorry. Let me start that over because I was off camera. What I'm going to do when I'm pinching it, pinching at the rear, I'm going to work forward and get about the distance of the body, roughly, and take all the tips and just pinch the tips off. They just tend to get in the way. Now, I'm going to tie this in at about half the distance. So, what I'm saying is half the distance up front, half the distance of that marabou going to the back. And just a loose wrap over, tighten, loose wrap over, tighten. I'm going to kind of line them up on the side. So you have something about like this. I'm going to do the same exact thing for my near side. Again, I'm just going to draw and pull, get to the tips, pinch those off, and just get in the way. I'm going to line everything up right on the side. And it doesn't have to be even. The, the two sides do not have to be even. You just need some sticking out front on both sides, your left and your right, and some to the rear. Uh, enough that you can handle and enough that you're going to be able to cut. Okay. So you should have something about like this. When I turn to the side, you can kind of see about like that. Next one I'm going to do is I'm going to grab everything, I'm going to draw it back, I'm going to leave my mylar tubing sticking out front, and I want to put my thumb on top to leave the back exposed. I'm going to hold this in place, and I'm going to start to wrap. I'm just doing this on the side so you can see it. Normally I wouldn't be tying it on the side like this. I'd be tying it just like this. That's good. Next, what we're going to do is there's two ways to go about this. Uh, you can grab everything as is and pull up, or you can rotate your vise, which I think is better. So your thread's angled down, your marabou's up. Now you can grab all of it and pull it up, which is actually down if you think about it. It's to the belly. And I want to have just a little bit exposed. Uh, no more than about a half inch or so. I'm going to come in, I'm just going to trim it all out so it leaves a little uh, puff like that. And you know, if you miss some, like there, you can come in and clean it up, trim it up. This part's not super important. What this is, is this is going to be like a hot spot gill. So we should be right about there. Next, uh, you can take your fingers and rough this stuff up and start drawing it to the back right over that black thread. You can also take like a hollow pen, which I find much easier, and push it to the back. Grab all the material. Do it a few times if you need to. Kind of work it. And so what we should be left with is basically where our head's going to go. So if you still have your scissors, 
dialed into about uh, one eye length, it should fit right right about there. Kind of tricky, but that's why we start the thread in a certain place so that it gives you a gauge. And we're just going to start putting wraps in, covering this up and building the head. Sorry, I know my hands are in the way. I'm, I'm trying to get them to not be in the way. And I'm not pulling super tight. I'm not super loose, just kind of medium. And okay. Oop. So the goal here is to build a nice head or try to build a nice head. On some of these smelt patterns, it can be a little challenging, right? Uh, some smelt patterns actually have like an elongated head. Uh, where it would actually be back to where my black thread is back here. And by the way, you could actually cover that up with white thread if you wanted to, or dubbing, or if you wanted to. I don't find it really necessary to tie the pattern itself. If you want to tie an elongated head, you can actually just keep tying back and forth until you get up on to this original tie-in point, and just make all of this your head, so that your uh, your your ending strands of your uh, uh, mylar tubing just you know they're folded at the back and it's all one piece you can build this part the same you can have you can actually kind of have some fun with this you could use some red thread right here and give it like a little red gill in front of that if you wanted to before you did all this so you got some options here but for what we're doing we're just going to tie it just like this and we want the head to be a little bit beefier in the back and kind of cone down forward so as I'm doing this, my focus on thread wraps are going to be to the back. Um, two reasons. One, I want the back of the head to be bigger. And two, I want to keep uh, all the frayed part of the mylar tubing moving towards the back. I don't want it coming back forward on me. And so now we're just starting to build kind of a cone shape going over and over, keeping our focus towards the back and not the front. This part here is why I said that uh, having your hook at just a slight angle, a sloping angle forward or up, is a, uh, it, it can definitely help. Because what can happen is you get too much thread right up here at the front and it all slides down right onto the eye which can be a real you know especially if you did a good job on building the body and everything and next thing you know your eye goes to crap and you're like well that was no fun so uh, you can determine the size of your head here as well uh, you can leave it small you can get it big now there's several ways to get it big though what I like to do is I like to get it into just a nice decent cone shape and then move to an alternative method, which we're going to do here in just a second. So I don't have my whip finisher again. I seriously have no idea what I could have possibly done with it. Anyway, I'm going to put some half hitches in here just to finish it off. And I'm just going to glue it shut with some crazy glue. Now the head's not perfect, but as is, this is actually a fishable fly once it dries. Just like that. If you want your head to look nicer, you can move into several products. One, like lacquer, black lacquer. Uh, a substitute for black ladder, lacquer would be uh, some like Sally Hansen's or other fingernail polish. Um, I like this extreme wear. Uh, it holds up real well. Um, or just some good old UV resin. I like solar res here. And I'll put a little blob on top. And I start working that around. A little bit more came out there than I'd anticipated all at once. I'm just going to let that kind of maneuver around so 
So that's just about it right there. Uh, the key with the UV resin is once you kind of have it somewhat shapely, you got to kind of keep moving it. If you have a little void down here like I do there, you may have to come back for it. Uh, don't overwork it. Once you have it about where you want it, start to zap it. And then uh, maybe come fill in the gaps. Although, to be honest with you, it's really not all that necessary. You just want the head protected. And we're almost done. Okay. So, once you have your head where you want it, uh, mine's almost there. Probably could use some more UV, but I'll skip forward here. Uh, if you want to do some coloring, uh, I can just use a black Sharpie. And what I'll do is I want my back to be just a tad bit darker. And so I'll take my marker, I'll run it right across the top of the back. I will quickly lick one of my fingers and start to rub it, spreading out that marker impression. And what it does is, is it darkens, it helps darken that green. And so as it rolls around, you can see, yeah, maybe you can't with the video, but you can see how it kind of goes from like a dark to a green to a pink and then by the time you get to the belly, it's like a pink white color because of all your white thread and your marabou. And so it gives it that smelt or minnow feel to it. So uh, anyway, so that is a, a easier version of a Charlie Mann style smelt. Again, you can tie these in a host of colors. There's uh, you know, you can, you can really just, what we did here, you can custom tailor to a bait fish in your neighborhood. Uh, originally, these were designed uh, for landlocked salmon. Um, I had one guy tell me, especially below power dams, uh, this, uh, this pattern or these types of patterns work extremely well for landlocked salmon. So uh, give it a shot, have some fun. Uh, experiment with your mylar tubing that's just kind of an easy way to do it uh, i hope you liked the video if you did please give it a thumbs up always appreciate that uh or you know as as the world says give it a like <laughs> uh subscribe always please subscribe if you haven't yet and share feel free to share uh, also if you have stumbled across this video this is one of the videos for our fly tying classes over at fly tying for beginners and facebook uh, if you're not a member and you'd like to be, we do a lot of fun stuff over there. We have giveaways, uh, tying classes, a great group of people over there uh, just looking to have fun and tie flies. So feel free to join us over there. Uh, answer the questions to get into the group. That's your golden ticket and you're in. And uh, other than that, um, yeah, give this pattern a try. Uh, tailor it to your waters. Happy tying, everybody. We'll see you next time.